Thank you so much for the opportunity. I, uh, wasn't Sister Ovlin's message on Sunday amazing? It's kind of funny because when she got that message, God gave me one. Hers was remember. Then God reminded me of something. How do you remember something if you haven't considered it? How do you remember something if it's not inside you? The Holy Ghost can only remind you of what he's taught you. But if you're not in his presence, how are you going to remember it? You know, it's, it's been a wild day. I've spent a lot of time in prayer today. And in my spirit, Pastor, I got so ruffled up. And God told me that this is going to be a night of wartime. And what happens? We're in the prayer room and Brother Robert walks in. And the first thing that came out of my mouth is the very thing that Mother Morgan always says. Let God be your first response, not your last resort. Yeah. And that's the first thing I said before I laid my hands on Brother Robert. The enemy is out to seek and destroy you. Right. And he will take away what's deep inside you. Yes. He will. He's tried that. He's tried that many of times. Yes. He's tried to kill us. Yes. Has he not, Trish? Yes. In today, today on my way here, I had two cars aiming this way, and I'm going this way. And all I said was, there's a whole lot of Jesus going on right here. <laughs> it's all I could say. <laughs> he, exactly. <laughs> so the word that God gave me tonight is a simple one word, and I kept asking God, just one word? He said, Consider. And I thought to myself, okay, exactly what it is you want me to say about consider. And the first thing out of my mind was, find out what consider means. Research it. Because what we think it is is not necessarily what it is. Consider means to view attentively, to sit by close, to set thy mind on and the eye of, to examine and to be attentive. To fix the mind on with a view of careful examination, to think on with care, to ponder, to study, and to meditate. Well, how are you going to be reminded if you are not pondering the Word of God or meditating on it? What is there for you to remember if you don't know it? How do you view and be attentive and observant without examining yourself? You know, the Word of God tells us to examine ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I've learned over the past six years through my trials and my tribulations and my downfalls or whatever you want to call it, to me, I call it a season that God allowed me to be in, mm -hmm. to raise me up in my faith or to make me understand what I thought I knew, but I did not know. And God said to me, I need you to consider my word. I need you to meditate on my word. And I thought to myself, I've been listening to pastor preach about your waiting room. I had six years of a waiting room. Thought I was never going to come out of it. He almost lost his salvation because the devil was taking away his praise. You think it's funny, but you know what? It's a season. And God allows those seasons for a reason. Everything is a time and a season. And I said, Lord, I know that I failed you because maybe I'm not meditating hard enough. Or maybe my mind capacity and my disease takes away my memorization. And God spoke to me. He said, no, it did not. Be slack in nothing. Be lazy not. And you know what? A lot of us are lazy. You are. And if you say you're not, you're a liar. I'll tell you why. Because you're made of flesh and blood. And it's going to fail you. And God convicted me. And I sat there and I began to think about the Word of God. And the Lord reminded me of something. I, you all have heard the story many of times and you know it very well. But Peter in the boat. You all know the story. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come unto you. What did the Lord do? Told him to come. So what did Peter do? He got out. And he stood there. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, Peter, okay? You know that he was thinking there when all this is transpiring, the first thing in his thought is there is no way I can stand on water nonetheless than walk on it. But because Jesus told him to come, he got out of the boat and he stood there on the water and he took a step or two. But guess what? When Peter took his eyes off of the word, he began to sink. 
Well, no, brother Danny, he took his word off of Jesus. Well, what do you think Jesus is? You can't separate the two. When Peter took his eyes off of the word, the living word, the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, he began to sink. And God reminded me of something. How often do you take your eyes off the living word? We do it every day. No, we don't. Yes, we do. You all have jobs to go to, and your mind is consumed by that job. But God reminded me of something. Every morning I get up, and the first thing I say before my feet touch the ground, Lord, I need you to be in this day. If that's the only thing I say in the morning, God knows my heart. I just need you to be in this day. You know, you, you can acknowledge God in everything you do throughout the day. I'm not telling you that you're supposed to forget everything about your job. I'm just telling you, acknowledge God in the job. Acknowledge God in your walk. Well, Brother Danny, my faith isn't that strong. Well, neither is mine. I'll be the first one to admit it. Mine isn't either. But it's a, it's a work in progress. It's not something that can happen overnight. It takes commitment on your side. It takes you to die in the flesh daily like the Word of God says. And it tells you to come before me daily in repentance. Well, how many of you do that? You know that is something you have to do. Because you're going to see, hear, taste, speak, do, react, act in a way that is not a manner of Christ. I do it every day. Every day. It could be just simply watching in front of the TV and then all of a sudden you get a guilty filthy. Well, I shouldn't have watched that. Well, no, you shouldn't have. It's your flesh. Brother Robert's being attacked in his flesh. Mother Morgan is being attacked in her flesh. The devil is out to seek and destroy and take the very word of God out of your life. Well, Brother Danny, what does that got to do with consider? I'll tell you something. If you know not the benefits of the Lord and you know not the precepts of the Lord, how are you going to stand on the word? How are you going to fight the battle? Remember the movie, The War Room? If that little lady did not know the word of God or have the faith built up inside of her that the Holy Ghost can remind her of what it's all about, that war room would mean nothing. It's a waste of your breath. But God is not a waste of your breath. Jesus is not a waste of your time. And the Lord spoke to me of something, and he says, I need you to consider my ways. I need you to consider my word. I need you to consider all that you are going through that I've saved you from, that I've protected you from. The accident that Trisha and I got into, it could have been a lot worse. But the hand of God was there. And the first thing, when we walked on the side of the street, the young man that hit us came over. And do you know, let me just tell you something that really touched my heart. The first thing he said to us is, are you okay? Think about that. Because usually the first thing we think about is, my car. His car was destroyed, but the first thing he thought about was, are you okay? And God convicted me, and he said something that I thought was very touching. That if a young man can simply care for another person in casting himself aside, is that not what we're supposed to be? You're to consider others before yourself. So there's one way to consider. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 7, the Word of God tells us a simple thing. Consider what I say, and the Lord to give thee understanding in all things. How are you going to have understanding if you don't ask for it? The Word of God tells us to ask for understanding and wisdom and knowledge. Did you know that that is a principle of the Word of God? Do you know that? It's a principle. And the Word of God tells you that, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. The, the word consider... And I began to seek God's face, and I began to pray. And God said to me, I need you to consider your time, where it is being spent, how you're spending it. Are you looking and watching for my return? Are you spending time worrying or thinking upon things you should not be? Are you watching television or listening to the radio? Are you listening to false prophecies? Are you truly pondering on the word of God? Jesus said to consider all that I've taught you. And he said to me, tell them, consider. Well, what are we supposed to consider? Well, the word of God tells us that finally, brethren, in Philippians 4, 8, I'm sorry, Becca. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Are you believing the truth or a lie? 
whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever, I love that word. Things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Are your thoughts pure in heart? Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And God said to me, do you consider these things? Do we think about these things on a daily basis? I bet we don't. I bet we don't. Ephesians 5, 15, verse 16. See ye then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as the wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Is there any more of an evil day than today? <laughs> it's the truth. I, isn't it? I, I cried this morning in my prayer room, my little closet, on my hands and knees. It's very hard for me to get down and very hard to get up, but I do it anyway. And I cried, and I thought to the Lord, I said, God, I know that these are bad times. And then you begin to worry, and you think, are you going to make it through? And God said to me, did you consider my word? Did you hear anything I said to you? Are you allowing the Holy Ghost to teach you, or are you doing it on your own? I looked up the word circumspectly. It means watchful and discreet, cautious, prudent, well-considered. And God said to me, do you consider my word well? Are you prudent in my teachings? I began to cry and I thought, God, how do I rise above this? And you want me to teach something that I truly failed myself. And he said to me, don't worry. We all do. None of us are perfect. None of us. I heard somebody say the other day that they're perfect in everything they do. And all I could do was laugh. I didn't mean to, but that's all I could do is I just laughed. And he said, why are you laughing? I said, you show me a perfect person and I'll show you a liar. And he said, what do you mean? There is nothing perfect about you. Your health is not perfect. Your vision is not perfect. Your tongue is not perfect. There is nothing perfect about you. Your looks are not perfect. Except for pastor. <laughs> John 14, 25 and 26. These things I've spoken unto you being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. How's he going to remind you of something you've not learned? How is he going to remind you of something you have not learned? Pastor says many, many of times, we love the babies. But eventually, you got to have some meat to survive. And did you know what meat is? It's protein. And what's protein? You ingest. You take it in. It nourishes your body. It gives you the strength. And I saw something. I'm going to skip over a lot of this. I saw something in the Word of God that, um, that uh, really got a hold of me. In Haggai 1.5, it says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And I began to think everything that I had failed God. And it reminded me something. When Peter took his eyes off of the Lord, he either looked down or he looked away. How many times do we look away from the Word of God? How many times is the Lord our last resort instead of our first response. Have you ever been convicted so deeply that you begin to weep and travail? Have you ever been so convicted that you ache deep with inside? And I try to live my life every day and walk and have faith in God and knowing that no matter what I go through, He'll bring me through. But let me tell you something. If you don't consider every word that God gives, 
And the Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the Word. The two cannot be separated. If you don't spend time with them, how are you going to have your protein? Or are you just going to sit on the sideline and lap up a little bit of milk and hope that that will get you through? Many times in the Old Testament, God talks about how the baby will have suck pretty much of the mother's breast. Well, I kind of think that that's where we are. We're stuck on the suck and we're not chewing yet. We're not eating up the word of God. It's not filling us and giving us the protein that we need for our muscles and to become healthy in God. Our faith is failing us. And the Lord told me, I need you to tell my people, consider yourself. Examine yourself. Do you know the word of God tells you to examine yourself? And if you don't do that on a daily basis, how are you going to know you're failing? The word of God tells me to go before him daily and die in the flesh. Be repentive. Pick up his cross. Not your flesh. Pick up his cross. Well, how are you going to pick up his cross if you don't have enough faith to go before him? The word of God tells me I can go boldly unto the throne of grace. Well, how many of you have that boldness to do it every day? Consider thy words. Meditate on my words. Ponder my word. Get it deep down inside you. Get it into the recesses of your mind and your heart and your spirit. Because if it's not there, you can't help somebody else. You can't go out there and preach the gospel if it's not inside you. If you're not living it and you don't feel it, well, who do you think you are to go out that door? I hear pastors say it all the time. Who do you think you are? Think about that. Who do you think you are? If everything you learn in this room and stays in here and you set it aside when you walk out that door, did you consider what you just heard? Or was it just words to your ear? Sister Evelyn preached that God wants us to remember. I try to remember the Lord every morning. That's why I say, Lord, be in this day. If that's the only thing I do, I've invited God to be in my day. I charge you tonight, Nate, would you come? I charge you tonight to think, really think. Examine yourself and examine your heart because this is the last days. This is the time where the evil one is going to rise. And you think it's bad right now, you just wait. You just wait. But unless you're sure in the foundation of the Lord and you're solid in the rock, sometimes... God has to put us into the cleft of the rock like he did Moses so that we can see the light. He had to be shaded so he can look directly into the light. But he couldn't do it. God had to cover his eyes as he passed by. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I need to cover you as I pass by so you can see the light. Did you know that darkness is swallowed up by light? And if you don't have the light in you, then as far as I'm concerned... You're fodder for the devil. He'll swallow you up in his darkness. God said, consider my words. Ponder, meditate, memorize, pray it. How many of you have taken, taken something out, of, the, out of, of Psalms and just prayed it? You've taken the word of God and you just pray it because you don't know what else to do. You just pray it. I've done it a lot. And just praying the word of God convicts me. When you go a day without conviction, I charge you, you need to examine yourself because you're not above anybody else. Close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you right now for your word. It is powerful. It is dividing. God, it is a living and an active thing. But Lord, if we don't consider your word, if we don't hide it within our heart, God, you told us, Lord Jesus, to memorize your word, to hide it within our heart, God, that we might not sin against you. God, I just pray right now, Lord, that you will just help every person to examine themselves. God, I'm not, I can't pray for them. All I can say is, God, help me. Help me to examine myself, God. Lord, that you would be in my life, my day. God, that you will just search out my heart make it right make it pure god cleanse me lord cleanse my thoughts god lord let my vision let my eyes be on you god 
Let me not be a Peter where I sink, but God, let me keep my eyes on you and knowing, God, that when I put my hand out, you are there, almighty God. Lord, let our faith arise tonight, oh Jesus. God, in the name of God, may you be lifted high tonight, Lord. May we understand that you are the first response, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. This young lady that is about to come didn't even know Jesus when she came to this church. And now I get to introduce to you Reverend Jasmine Ross. Come and preach the word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. God is definitely here tonight. Felt him before back in the prayer room. And I know that it's good because this week it's been terrible. So before I even start, I've got a testimony. And I had to wait on it because it's part of my message. So many of you know that I... I was not raised in a Christian home. I think all of us know. Um, with uh, atheist agnostic parents. And it was a struggle to shed that and come into what God has for me. And I'm so glad that I did. Because uh, a couple weeks ago, no, it's probably a couple months now, uh, my stepdad got saved. <laughs> And that's mind-blowing enough, but Saturday night, he's getting baptized. God answers prayers. So if any of you are holding on to family members, I'm still holding on for some of others of mine, but hold on because God answers prayers. He is faithful. Yes, he is. And God isn't just faithful, but he's serious. So I have a, an anti-testimony. That's weird sounding. Um, it's a testimony about things you should do, uh, not things that I did do. So we've heard a lot about the good things of tithing and how it brings the blessings of God and uh, move the decimal, reverse the curse. A couple weeks ago, I forgot to bring my tithe. And didn't really think that was that big of a deal because, like, I would just bring it later, right? So the, the reason that I didn't bring it is kind of funny. I was afraid of being late to praise team practice and Nate being mad at me. So that's why I didn't bring my tithe. Um, also, I'd forgotten it the day before. It's not. No. What I was trying to say about that is I was afraid of how you would react. So. <laughs> that doesn't sound any better. <laughs> I'll get to my point about that. It's not about me. So after everything was fine, and then after church, I decided that I wanted some ice cream. So I went to Dairy Queen and I got some ice cream and I was trying to get into my car and I had too many things in my hand and I dropped my phone, shattered the entire screen. Just the whole thing was just, just awful. It still worked, but like it hurt to use. So it was not good. It was very painful. So I decided the next day I had to go get it fixed. I did not spill my ice cream. I shattered my phone. <laughs> yeah. 
So I went and got it fixed. I had to, the only Apple store with an appointment that day was all the way, like really far away from me. So I drove all the way out there, waited forever because they had, it was like late. And then the cost to my, repair my phone was exactly as much as my tithe. So uh, God is serious. <laughs> yeah, that was not good. So pay your tithes. On time, don't forget them. But after all of that, I started to think, like, wow, God is really serious. Like, I didn't bring my tithe one day, and I have to pay double? <laughs> but the, it's the reason that I didn't stop for the tithe. I didn't stop because I have a sense of pride about being punctual. And I was afraid of how, of upsetting someone. So, what can a man do compared to God? When we stand before God at the judgment throne, we're going to stand all by ourselves. Ananias and Sapphira died for their lies and disobedience. And others died as well. So praise God for grace that I haven't died because I forgot my tithe. God is good. I take a new seriousness to that tithe or die. So when you give your account to God on, in front of the judgment throne, you'll have to give an account for what you did and what you didn't do and why you didn't do it. What has God called you to that you were too afraid to do because of the reaction that someone would have? This hit me so hard. Because there are so many things that I know that I have already failed because I was afraid of how someone would react and how they might react towards me and any tension that would cause. But seriously, anything of, that would happen because of that has n is nowhere near what, would, what's gonna, what it's going to feel like to tell God why you failed. Why he gave you somebody to minister to, to save their lives, to change their eternity, and you were afraid? Because they might be mad at you? They might get uncomfortable? They might not talk to you again? I'd rather they didn't talk to me again than have to tell God that I failed because I was afraid. It's so scary to think about in the past how many times I've failed and I'm glad there's no more weeping after that. So how often are you serious about God? He's so serious about everything. So when are you serious? Are you serious Wednesday and Sunday? What about Tuesday? What about Friday night? What about when you're at work and there are a million things going on? I know. I have a job that would consume my entire life if I'd let it. But for some of us, it might not be what a man would think. Sometimes it's the cares of life that come in and crowd our whole thought process. Everything that's going on is the things that are happening and everything that's happening, we're so overwhelmed and bared down that we're not thinking about God. And that's so scary because I know that I've done that so many times. But I want to encourage you tonight to be serious because God is serious. Throw off the apathy and the complacency and all the cares. God needs people that are serious about his work. This is, this is our life. What we do for God is our life. The reason that we live, not just a small part of it. It's not just Wednesdays. It's not just Sundays. It's not just when you feel like it. Right. Soldiers don't, aren't soldiers when they feel like it. Right. Right. Come on, that's good. 
We're called to this life. We're called to be soldiers. We're called to be serious because God is serious. The work that he has is serious. Can you turn to 1 Peter 5 and 7? We're supposed to cast our cares on God because he cares for us, one, yes, but so that it doesn't crowd our minds, so that we're not so focused on the things that are going wrong in our lives, the children that are disobedient and the paperwork and all the crazy. Because it would come in and it would crowd your mind and it would distract you from what God has for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. You need to be watching, you need to be following, because if he can, he will. Yeah. Any space you give him, any distraction from what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to sink, you're going to fall, he's going to get you. Yeah. But I want to encourage you, because... It's not really that hard to be watching, to concentrate on what God has for us to do, what God wants for us to do. We love him, so we want to focus on him. You love people. It's not hard to remember the people that you care about. So it shouldn't be hard to concentrate on God and what he wants and what he has for us because we love him so much. We sing about it all the time. That's one of my favorite songs. I love you, Jesus. So why is this so important? Why is it important to watch other than just about ourselves? Can you t turn to Matthew, the 20th chapter? So this is the parable of the householder with a, with a vineyard. So we... It says, for the kingdom of heaven, so we know that's Basilea, we need to pay attention to this. So, the, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And we had, when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vi his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard. And whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. He went, again, he went out again about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Why did he go out five times? Weren't the first people that he found enough to do the work of the vineyard? But he went out five times during the day. In the 11th hour, he went out and found people still idle. Why were they still idle? Because no one had hired them. No one had told them about any work. There are 11th hour people that God still wants. And we need to be watching for them. Or they won't get hired. They'll miss it if we don't tell them. Our whole existence is about that. It's about getting people, telling them about Jesus, giving them hope. Otherwise, why are we here? What are we doing? I am a chronic procrastinator, so I work really well with deadlines. Jesus is coming back soon. That's a really great deadline, because after the trumpet sounds, there's no more. You can't file for an extension. There's no more time. You are done. And anybody that's not with us is left here. We have a message to tell That's the people real. out these doors, out across the country, out yes. across the world. Yes. God just doesn't care about the people in this room, the people back there, the people that come to this church or are part of this fellowship. Right. There 
are 11th hour people that haven't been told the truth. Any part of the truth. My God, help us, Lord. Help us. We need to get serious about God because there are some people that are very serious about darkness. They know the darkness. At my school, our social worker has been swamped with all kinds of crazy happening. And she made a comment today that just struck me right in the heart. She said, there's something in the air. There is something in the air. We're supposed to fight against it, not let it take our people, our children, the people of this world that God created. They mean so much to him. They should mean that much to us. We need to be serious because there are people that need us to be serious. There are people that need us to be crying out for their souls, that need us to be praying for them, that need us to get past all the things in our lives and concentrate on them. They need us. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be used for the people that are out there that need us, God. Your people that you've created, God, that you want to use. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let them know, let them know that they too can go to live forevermore with Jesus. Let them know. Let them know, let them know.